Good evening and welcome to the CR191 Innovation of Technology. Today we're going to be talking to you about, well first of all we're going to be focusing on the KLA of Science at year five. We're going to be talking about the solar system and how specifically the innovation, the technology of Adobe Flash Player can be used through looking at the solar system. Now the Australian curriculum, the national curriculum calls um, Space. It calls it Earth and Space Sciences. It says the Earth is part of a system of planets orbiting around a star, the Sun. Now the Queensland curriculum, the state curriculum, calls it the solar system, it calls it Earth and Beyond. It says the Earth, solar system, and universe are dynamic systems. Changes in patterns in different environments in space are scientific explanations. For example, the idea that planets orbit the Sun and moons orbit planets can be used to explain day and night and the phases of the moon. Now in this workshop today, we'll be talking about Adobe Flash Player, introducing it to you guys, what it is, what it does, and how it can be used in the classroom. Flash Player is an impressive tool that can be used for teaching. It's a program that provides viewing for applications and videos. If you've used a YouTube video in the classroom, if you've used um, an interactive online game through the interactive whiteboard, through laptops, a lot of these programs actually use Flash Player to run their program. YouTube, if you look up as it loads at the very beginning, it says loading Flash Player, which is loading, loading Adobe Flash Player. So these different programs, these different websites actually run their programs through Adobe Flash Player. Now Flash Player, it can perform an extensive amount of operations, so we'll just be focusing on... Teachers and lecturers have been using computers, projectors, and televisions for quite some time now. Right? Technology is effective in the classroom purely because it is uh, proven to actually improve cognitive development, addresses multiple uh, intelligences, and accounts for different learning styles. So in Howard Gardner's book, uh, Can Technology Exploit Our Many Ways of Knowing, it teaches us that according to multiple intelligences theory, all human beings possess at least eight forms of intelligences which I call linguistic, logical, mathematical, musical, spatial, totally kinesthetic, naturalist, interpersonal, and intrapersonal. So at school at the moment, one of the problems is that we actually only address two of these ones primarily. That would be the linguistic and the logical mathematical. When you do this, you're actually only effectively teaching a portion of the class. The rest of the students who actually you know, learn by any of our other style, they are unfortunately just left behind. So, Touching now on cognitive development, uh, Piaget's theory of cognitive development is a comprehensive theory about the nature and development of human intelligence. It deals with the nature of knowledge itself and how we come to acquire it, construct it, and use it. Today's lesson is going to be you know, solely on Adobe Flash Player. And Flash Player works so efficiently in schools because it has a simple yet effective and interactive interface. It is a user-friendly innovation of technology and it is easy for students to utilize in learning about the solar system to be able to have very little trouble in being able to use it effectively and efficiently. Our online software tools can be used to help students who have different learning styles in the majority of the class. For example, children with learning disabilities or problems with students such as ESL students. They can help broaden understandings and knowledge of subjects they study in class or subjects they have shown an interest in out of class. This can help students achieve the full potential for their learning and benefit students by learning differently. Both Adobe and online software help benefit students' understanding of technology, specifically in subjects which are not technology-based. By allowing students to interact with technology in order to improve their understandings, they become comfortable and informed with not only the technology, but the topic at hand. By choosing sources and links aimed at, the aimed at groups, classes and individuals to benefit their learning styles and multiple intelligences, this can really make a difference. This can also help ESL students, students whose second language is English. They may not understand the topic, and by choosing a different link, this can help them uh, if it's in their own language or if it's a slower based English program. In remote locations, it also brings benefit to the teachers and supervisors. They can expand the subjects and introduce the students to greater topics than which are available in the library. This can help students by allowing them to interact with noises, videos, images, and diagrams of which they may not otherwise be able to, of which may have otherwise not have been available. 
Uh, Adobe Flash Player and most other interactive software programs require basic technology skills. This can create a disadvantage to students who have difficulties and are behind in class. However, with guidance from a teacher or a supervisor, they can still view and use the program. Funding for schools for computers or laptops can be an issue, although the government has funding programs for most schools. This is still an issue in today's society, however. Time from states can be a burden on the technology by not allowing adequate time for technology-based subjects, uh, thus limiting the information which can be discovered and used. The topic should be clearly explained to all students and supervisors. This allows students to narrow down on only topic-related subjects, maximising further knowledge and understandings. Teachers should separate the class into groups, if order, to maximise information received by the same intelligence groups. This can maximise learning, minimise time wastage and benefit all including, uh, including providing a, a steady and cooperative classroom. Well, now we're going to be doing the workshop activity. This is where you guys can get in, get dirty, figure out how Adobe Flash Play works. Um, yeah. You use that expression. So um, the table over here, you'll be watching, this is group three on your handout, you'll be watching a Discovery Channel video on the solar system. It's from YouTube. And on that, you'll have that worksheet. You'll be listing the pros, the cons, and how it can be implemented in the classroom. And, uh, each group is to assign one person to, um, after five minutes, you'll have to be given five minutes to record your findings and then one minute of presenting. So each group is to have one person, name one person to present the info to the rest of the class about the pros, the cons, and what you wrote on the sheet, how it can be implemented in the classroom. So this group is doing the Discovery Channel video for, um, on YouTube that's already loaded. The front group here, you will be looking at NASA. So you'll be just looking, there, there's different things that you can do through this web-based software and it's using Adobe Flash Player. And the last group, you'll be using the website kidsastronomy.com. You'll be doing the same, filling out the worksheet, pros, cons, how it can be implemented. So, go for it. He said pros were the moving images like matched what they were talking about. Yeah. Was in time. It was very factual. Um, there were diagrams and the music went along well with the video. But um, cons were there were subtitles in different language, which I found really distracting personally. Um, it was all about evolution, which like obviously doesn't support Christianity. Yeah, a lot of interactive activities. Um, it's visually appealing. The information is relevant and useful, but a con to that is that um, students might skip over it and miss out on really relevant information to what they might be learning. So this does cater to that as well as it's giving the written whatever summary of what we're learning. But yeah. it's just a little, you know, because whatever age you're aimed at, there, it's just like, hey, that's enough information for me to take in if I'm at this age. But you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's good. That's good. All right, well, you guys were able to explore for yourselves a little bit, not just us telling you, and just to see how these programs actually use Flash Player. So it's like an interface for you to be able to access these programs. And so we, we as a group believe that Flash Player has a place in the classroom. We believe that uh, teachers can use YouTube to show videos, that it caters to different learning styles, that kids can learn so well, especially through the solar system, through science. They can learn and be engaged. And, and it's just a great way for the kids and the students to learn. And we just believe that Adobe Flash Player is definitely, in the coming years, even more, even now, it is being used and will be used more as technology. Now.